it's having the strength, the courage, sometimes the audacity to be true to who you are, to tune in to the deepest parts of yourself, all these different parts of yourself, and to have the courage to express that to other people, essentially to be authentic. Now, I believe that we all have power inside of us. It's such a funny word in our culture because it often denotes power over or competition. And what we're really speaking about is the power within. So this means strength, resiliency, the ability to speak assertively. And you can learn that if you don't already know how to do it. The ability to understand and express your needs to be comfortable in your skin, to own your asphalts. These are all the different things that I associate with power. Now, Susan and Amber both described different paths to how they got to be the authoritative and amazing women that they are today. And mine's a bit of an amalgam of both. As a young child and as an adolescent growing up, I did seem to naturally uh, embody a quote-unquote leader, you know, as much as someone can be at that age. Meaning, you know, people came to me and they let me design rules for games and they listened to me when I spoke and people have been coming to me for advice and feedback truthfully ever since I can remember. So in a lot of ways, it was innate and very natural for me to assume a type of leadership role. However, I was also very cognizant that by standing out, I was gathering a lot of negative attention. And this type of negative attention was extremely painful for me. It rubbed against the fabric of who I was because I was really just, as far as I understood, being myself. So when people didn't like me um, or they talked behind my back because I was too much, occupying too much space, et cetera, et cetera, my feelings were really hurt. And I began to get the subtle plan. Subtle is not even the right word. I began to develop a plan. And that was to minimize myself, to be a little less obvious. Now, it really... It was a real mixed bag, and you have to understand, it's an unconscious plan. So I still laughed loud, because I always do. I spoke loud, I certainly took up space, but I tried to minimize it by hiding my opinions, by not stating my needs, by avoiding conflict, by being placating, pleasing, nice, all of these different um, behavioral things that I could do so that I really couldn't gather so much static along the way. I didn't want to rock the boat or make waves. But a funny thing happened with that. It didn't really seem to stop the, um, the snowball effect because now not only was I not acting in my power, but there was a dissonance. Because anyone who's even a little sensitive could feel into the fact that I was this strong, full of opinions, vibrant woman. And there was a discrepancy that they perceived as inauthenticity. And it really does make sense because I wasn't fully inhabiting or expressing, owning who I was. So my path to finding my power was um, a bit of a longer one. I honestly can say I don't feel like I really lived firmly in my skin, comfortably in who I was till maybe a few years ago. And prior to that, I did funny things. I remember saying in my 20s, I don't have any opinions. And, you know, as I said, I'm really opinionated. But I believed it, consciously, I believed it, because I had almost gotten to the place where I bought into my own story. I bought into my own defense mechanism. Another thing that I had a tendency to do was to give my power away to others. So often someone who I might do this with would be the man that I was with. And it's like, no, no, you take it, you hold it. 
Well, I thought this was a brilliant strategy, again, unconscious, but I did note times when I think, great, let him express my stance, my opinion, and let him gather the critique around it, get the static, you know, and often they do. They got criticism or they had conflict or they had to engage in a heated debate, you know, however it turned out. And I got to just be likable still. And I got to just be in the background. But it wasn't true to who I was. And what happened over time is I start to kind of buy into the scenario that I had created. And from giving away my power, not only did I lose my own authenticity, but I become less attractive to him because I had given up parts of myself that were appealing. I started to feel disempowered, truly. I started to believe I didn't have any. And that makes us um, more prone towards certain storylines. If you really feel disempowered, you are more likely to believe you are a victim of somebody else who holds all the power or of circumstance. Uh, maybe you'll buy into the martyr storyline. But all in all, you begin to live that way as if you don't have a choice, as if you're not autonomous, as if you can't express your needs and have them be met in the world. So when I moved to San Francisco and started attending school for therapy, and I had left behind some of my important relationships in my life, and I was in a new city, and I was in a position where people kept asking, how do you feel, how do you feel, who are you, we wanna see you. I finally had the opportunity to begin to own myself in my complexity and in my entirety. And so I came out and yes, I expressed my opinions and I stated my beliefs and I stood up for what I believed in and I took on the authority role. And guess what happened? I got a lot of static. I, I did have a number of people who uh, maybe expressed that they didn't care for me or were upset that I took up too much space in a room. But there was also a real gift. To be honest, when you feel comfortable in your skin, when you can put your head down at the end of the day and know that you were true to who you were, and to feel empowered and live that way, these are all amazing gifts. And what I realized in retrospect was that people were clashing with me because there was something to clash with. What I mean is that when you take the leap and you embody who you are and you express what you believe and value, there's more substance for people to have friction with because there's a you, a substantial you there that they can clash with. When you're hiding behind the scenes and playing nice, playing coy, being meek, being quiet, protecting and defending, there's not a lot for them to really even disagree with. The other thing that I learned was, hey, people may not like me like this, but that's life. People often don't like you when you're too quiet or when you're too nice. It's, it's a fact of the matter. And as much as some people clashed with me as I showed up more substantially, more in my body, other people began to admire me and they found more to connect with, more to value and more to love. So what's the moral of the story? First, I wasn't hiding anything anyway. So as I said, people know way more about you than you may even want them to. They could always sense in me my confidence, my strength, my personality. And so I wasn't hiding anything. I was only creating more confusion, more distress for them and for myself by not owning who I was. Second, hey, you can't always be liked. It's not a worthwhile goal. Being true to yourself, um, stating what you want and believe in the world, these things have way more intrinsic value for us. And lastly, when you dare to shine, people also find way more to be inspired by, way more to connect with. 